Hello guys, I am back again, still updating you with a breaking, trending news what is going on in Nigeria. So wherever you are, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on your location at this time of the day. Okay guys, I have this quick um, update to share with you. Remember a few days ago, I think um, it was like two days ago, where um, a news broke out that um, a Methodist church prelate was abducted uh that is a uh, eminent samuel kanu uche was um abducted uh by kidnappers okay so i have my reason of uh, making this video for you guys and then um, like i told you guys my opinion is always personal if you have anything to contribute you can put it down in the comment section below okay um you have seen it already on your screen Shocker, I was kidnapped by Fulani headsmen working with soldiers, paid 100 million as ransom, Methodist prelate. Okay, guys, um, before I give you more details on this particular story, don't forget to subscribe, turn on your bell notification so you get updated whenever I publish a new video for you guys. So uh, without wasting much of your time, uh, just like I said, um, I believe it is no longer news about the abduction of uh, the Methodist uh, prelate, uh, Eminence Samuokanu Uche. Okay, so according to him, he has um, narrated everything, what actually happened that led to his abduction. Okay, so let me quickly give you what his statement, all right, in quote. Then uh, I will put one or two contributions and allow you guys to also put in your contribution on the comment section below. So in his word, he said, these people came out from the bush. They divided themselves into three places. Some people fired at us and there was another group in front to make sure that we didn't run away. They fired shot at our vehicle and eventually they abducted three of us. The communication man of the church was able to escape. The driver was able to escape. They abducted me the bishop of Oweri, and my chaplain, and they took us to the bush and were torturing us. It was in the process of the torture that I hid my right eye on the tree. Even when blood was flowing and I was soaking my eye with a handkerchief, they didn't feel like anything. All they said was that we should follow them that they were not actually against Nigerian citizens, but against the government, that the government is a bad government. They are Fulani boys, all the aid are Fulanese. They said the day they will see the president on any or any of his representatives, they will chew him raw, that he is their brother, but he has disappointed them and has disappointed Nigeria. I said, even though I am part of the government, I am a churchman, I'm not a government official. They said, okay, that that is what have saved you. We would have killed you outrightly without asking for any ransom. But now that you are a churchman, let's go inside the bush. I trek up to 15 kilometers, but I knew that we were Rick Marolin going up and down and eventually at, a, at 11 p.m., they said, okay, now we can negotiate. Each of us will pay 50 million and we are going to pay 150 million. I thought it was a joke. I said, we were going to pay 10 million. And they said, what? Don't say that. They lift up their knife to cut me. I said, please hold on. All right. I said, okay, we will pay you 100 million after some time they said where is the money and i said this is sunday night how can we get money this night and you know that there is this seed at home in Igbo land we can't afford the money now be patient till morning we will make contacts i told them we will raise the money for you but the irony of it where they were situated the soldier, all of the Fulani extractions, Nigerian soldiers, they were at the Lomara Junction, and these boys were going behind them. Meanwhile, they kept their cows somewhere, numbering about 200. 
They said, when are you bringing the money? I said, by noon, I will call the people I've contacted, whether the money had been raised, and I called them. They said that they are gathering the money and they hate it because they said I will use my phone to talk. They can't use their phone. They don't want to be tracked. Their leader was, was born in Igbo land, but his parents have died. He said he was born around Umuahia, Umuzuku, and his father was a, was a cow dealer. Around 5.30 p.m., the youngest boy, who I think is a younger brother to the commander, said, Oga, congratulations, you are free to go now. We have got our money. You can go. Let me show you the road. They took us to they took us to Old Road, where they wrote, Welcome to Oimo and goodbye from Abia. They told us that after buying enough weapons, they are going to bring all those people that were driven away from Samfara, Katsina, Sambisa Forest, that they are all coming to locate themselves in Igbo land and deal with us. He said, do you know about an expressway? We are in all the bush here. We are also in the south-south. We are waiting for the slightest signal. We will finish you people and take over this land. They claim Nigeria belongs to them. All right, guys, Um, that is the story. Uh, the method is pretty late. Uh, narrating what actually happened after he must have paid about 100 million Naira ransom before uh, his release. Okay, guys, um, I really don't know what to say, but Nigeria is becoming something else. I believe, uh, I remember a few days ago, uh, a police sergeant in a viral video was lamenting of uh, 63,000 Naira as salary for a sergeant, 63,000 Naira, with the level and high cost of living. And believe me, this man uh, would have been or should be a family man. Okay, this man should be a family man. Then, if you are paying a police sergeant, this is one of the issues. Why um, the military men, the police, find it so reluctant uh, maybe to be fighting these people? Yes, that was the purpose of NSAS protest. I believe if the government should increase the welfare of these uh, security agencies, it will go a long way. 63,000 Naira for a family man. How do you feed? We are talking of a country where people, average people feed less than $2 daily. Yes, how will you feed as a family man? If as a family man you are, you are feeding with a thousand Naira in Nigeria, um, what about your wife? What about your children? Maybe you have two, three children. What about their school fees? What about bills, rent? and other uh, miscellaneous, as in it doesn't make sense. So I believe um, one of the way uh, most of this um, should stop is the government increasing the welfare of uh, the security agencies. Now imagine, just like what this man says, of course, this is a prelate, a Methodist priest. He wouldn't just come out and be saying whatever he feels. The man says he paid 100 million Naira. And sometimes, even if when these kidnappers call it ransom, as in it always so painful that the government will come out saying no ransom was paid. I mean, these people risk their life abducting citizens. And maybe at the end of the day, when these people are being freed, the government will come out to tell Nigerians. Of course, they are telling the gullible Nigerians that no ransom was paid. How do you expect people to believe that? So this man said, he paid 100 million naira before he was freed with three others. And soldiers, they were at the back of military people. How do you explain that? How do you explain it? All right, guys, um, I don't want to waste much of your time more than this. If you have anything to contribute, put it down in the comment section below. See you guys in another update.